guys, Monster Wrestler here at Pro Play Games. Today I'm going to look into the Red Frieza swap engine that uh, is going to be released in Clash of Fates uh, next month. So today I wanted to make, you know, present a deck and see what I believe the intention was for Bandai when they made up this new engine with uh, Frieza having a 1 drop, 2 drop, 3 drop, and a 5 drop and they all swap into each other. Um, so let's start. So what we got here is the new Clash of Fates Frieza leader. It's a re red Frieza army. Uh, it awakens to a Frieza metamorphic threat. Um, the reason why I need to use this leader uh, is because the five drop only works with red Frieza army leaders and this is currently the only one. So we have to use this uh, or else this five drop doesn't really do anything. So yeah. Um, on its front side it says activate main, take a life, and then look at the top two cards. If it's a Frieza army that's red, you add it to your hand and put the rest on the bottom. Uh, so half our deck should be Frieza army that's red. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so that's 24, that's almost half. So it's a pretty decent rate, probably around 70 something percent uh, to hit the effect on the front side. And either way, it's still a self-awakening leader, so that's pretty good. Um, when it awakens, it untaps one and draws you a card. So, kind of like uh, Krillin in that sense, because it doesn't you don't get the full untapping, but you don't get the full draw either. So it's kind of uh, in between, which isn't that bad. It's pretty new. Uh, the other side is really interesting. It attacks, draws a card like usual, and then once per turn you activate main, KO one of your Red Frieza army cards. And then you gain 5k on this leader for this turn and during your opponent's turn. So it's kind of like your leader is a 20k swing and a 20k defensive leader for a turn, as long as you use its effect. Um, so let's talk about the red Frieza engine, the swap. So we got our one drop Frieza, over, over, Frieza Overture to Battle. This card is your bread and butter. It's kind of like the Bardock, but not as good as Bardock. If they made a Bardock level one drop again, it, it'll probably break the game. Um, so what you do with it is you play it, you choose a red uh, battle card or red leader, so you choose your leader easily, and then he immediately swaps for free. So he, gets, he swaps to a two drop red Frieza for free. Um, so you turn into the evolutionary process Frieza, which is just a 15k static card. On your opponent's turn he even turns down to 10k, so you really don't want to swing with him and leave him, leave him alone. You want to leave him either up or immediately swap out on the turn he's played. Uh, he swaps for one red to a three drop Frieza. So that turns into the Frieza Storm of Blows. This is a great card, I really love this card. It is a 15k barrier three drop that when he comes into play, he KOs a 20k less power card as long as it doesn't have barrier. Uh, that's really strong, just these three cards in combination because it gets you a lot of like damage out while also very, be very cheaply to get uh, cards out. Like, this 2-drop is a 1-drop, this 3-drop is a 2-drop. Is a it's really efficient, and uh, the fact that it KOs cards is like icing on the cake. It's really strong. Um, the final piece of the swap is the final showdown Frieza. This is an amazing card. I really like it. It's 25k. I think it even has... Uh, yeah, it comes with uh, alternate art. Uh, SPR, where it has like a little phrase on it from the show, it hurt, like, so Goku went in, I guess. <laughs> um, so I'm definitely be using that art of it if I get this deck in person. Uh, what it does is double strike critical. That's just its stats, double strike and critical, which is, I love that. And then auto, as long as your leader is a red Frieza army, which is the only one, so you have to play this currently, uh, once per turn, when your opponent plays a card, a battle card, or tries to attempt to play one, you can Bloodlusted pretty much. It comes into play Bloodlusted, but it gets through Deflect because technically it is not a counterplay card. It is the auto of, of, of a battle card. So it's really strong. You got like Bloodlust on Bloodlust in this deck, as you can see. And it will just completely like, like people forgot about Bloodlust pretty much because it hasn't seen play for a while, but they're gonna learn, learn again in the next format for sure. Um, so let's see the rest of the deck. As you see, we have to have a decent number of referees of army or else our leader won't work. So our super combo is going to be Jace, which technically is a Frieza red army. Uh, it's just a 5 or less life, gain 10k power. It doesn't start with 10k power like the older ones, 
but it's fine because we are a self waking leader, so we should have five life at a reasonable pace in the game. Uh, this is an interesting choice here, the Zarbon hidden potential. Uh, what I, the reason why he's in the deck is for that two drop spot, when if you whiff on you know going up the chain and you don't have anything else to do on turn two, you just want to drop this down and it can still help you in the game. At, or, or it's just red energy and it's surgical off your leader effect. You don't want to whiff. So what it does is when it's KO'd, you draw a card and minus 15k uh, one of your opponent's battle cards duration of the turn. This is really useful when using your leader ability because you have to KO a red Frieza army card. So you can KO it. It's not placing it like the set one Frieza. You actually KO it so it dies and you get its effect to go off on your turn. But it actually replaces itself, which is really strong. And you get a swing out of it first before it dies. You can, you can attack with it first and then KO it. Um, so that's the, the two drop. He's not really supposed to be played. It's more of if you whiff on your turn two. You need to play something. Uh, again, the three drop. This is so strong. It just KOs of cards. Red cards, uh, usually it was green cards that are the only ones that KO cards. And like red, like manipulated attack, I guess. Like just like how Zarbon does that. But this actually KOs 20k or less battle cards. It's really strong. Um, I love Champa. He's just there because it's a good finisher as always. Put it on anything, go for game. Give it to this Mira that I have added into the deck for a reason. Um, but yeah, that's generally the lineup of your your uh, one, turns one through three. You're gonna be playing the Frieza swap up to the five drop. Five drop comes out by turn three, usually. Turn one, you really don't do anything. You don't have to if you don't want to. But turn two, you wanna go from your one drop to your two drop and your two drop to your three drop and leave it in active mode and pass turn, because it has barriers. So you just want to just leave it there, because it costs two to swap into the five drop. So on turn two, you need this needs to be on the board, and then turn three, you charge your second red energy, and you have one open, just because you don't want to tap out, uh, and you go into your five drop. And then you're pretty much allowed to have a yellow energy open and this card on the board at the same time. Like, you're bloodlusting everything. Nothing's going to get through, and you can just kill it next turn with the three drop. Very, very good control, like board control, where like set in one meta kind of is coming back where you bloodlust and you KO their card and you develop your board and they can't develop theirs. Very strong, and I like this strategy. Um, the last few red cards is the after image technique because your leader is red, and if you get sparking, you can uh, use it from your life instead. Really strong, and it's really useful against the one two swap. Like you're doing swap, but they're doing their aggro swap, you're, but you're trying to get up to your 5 drop, which is way more of what I feel like swap should have done, uh, but we just figure out a way to cheat it out and just abuse the, the first two <laughs> swap part of the uh, engine. So killing a 10k or less on just negating the attack is really, really strong. And you can use that from life, so it's really, really useful. Other than that, it's just red energy, so that's that. Uh, Planet M2, just a one of. Uh, to minus 5k when you attack. It's just good value over time. And outside of that, it's just red energy, like I said. Um, you This deck actually has a lot of extra cards, to be honest. Uh, but it's fine because you blow less everything. So threats are kind of neutered for the turn, so to say. Um, and then you can control the board state. You have just enough pow combo power in this deck. When you, uh, but you'll get to that to the end here. Um, let's go over our overall cards real quick. Supreme, Kai of Time, and Mira. I did this because there's a very low cost, like like Scientist Food costs 7 over them. It's a bit hefty, uh, you don't really mill or anything, so it's kind of hard to get that much in the discard. Uh, 3 is pretty manageable, you do KO your own cards, so they drop, they go to the drop area and you can do it in the same turn, just over them. Uh, your leader is known to gain power, so you KO one of your cards, you go to 20k. You over them, you go to 25. Um, the red Frieza, if you played it and then KO'd it, which is a really good play, uh, he goes up to five again. So it'll be 30,000 on base damage with your leader swing if you have a Supreme Kai of Time and you use your leader ability and you use your one drop uh, for you to give him 5k power. So that's that's a lot of base damage. That's pretty good. I like that. Uh, mirror is your finisher. We have the combo, we have the mirror, we have the battering, and we have the chomp. Like that's, that's, that's all we need. This is a red-yellow deck, so you'll be able to pull this off pretty often um just keep these pieces in your hand you you should be able to close out games pretty easily 
Um, so let's move on to yellow. So we got battering laser, like I just said. It's just to close out games, counter counters is just one of the best effects in the game. You do have to pitch a yellow card for it, and we, our yellow counts only 16, but it's a, it's a once per game, so if you need it, you'll, you'll, you should have the, the pieces in your hand when you're ready for it. Uh, four Bloodlust, it could go down to three if you want to, but the yellow count needs to kind of stay or go up a little bit, in my opinion. Uh, Bloodlust is back, it is a, this is a Frieza army leader, you don't have to be a yellow leader, it just needs to be Frieza army, and technically it is. Uh, so you can use Bloodlust again, it'll catch people off guard every time. You don't have to worry about uh, Cell Chain pretty much ever again. Because uh, you can bloodlust the the, the three drop or the five or the five drop and still kill it with your Frieza storm of blows. That's a really good combo um, that they probably don't want to expect, and I think this destroys the cell chain android shenanigans that they're trying to do. Uh, what an interesting thing that I wanted to put in here was Death Ball. Uh, people haven't I haven't seen this card see any play, but I really think it's really good. There's so many Frieza leaders out there. Some of them are, should definitely be using this card. Uh, it is, when your leader card is Frieza, you gain 15k power for the battle, and if it's your turn, you can KO one of your opponent's cards in rest mode. This is insane. Like, imagine a 30k, uh, like, cell that just came into play or whatever, and then it's in rest mode and attacked, maybe you negated it, and this, you're, now it's your turn. Remember how I said you had 30k power base with, like, all the stuff that you can do with this leader? Imagine giving it 15k more power and killing a card in the process. That's value. And then just slap on a Chompa. That's that's like 55k double strike within like three energy, or maybe you didn't lose that many cards in the process. And they just survive a, that big of a number. It's, it's, I think it's really good. I think people should be using Death Ball a lot more. It's And it, uh, provided that you already have a Sensi Bean like effect, if they try to combo really high, uh, and you just like, you, uh, you don't feel like negating it, whatever and it goes through and they start comboing out of nowhere, you're just like, uh, Death Ball, one card is 15k worth combo power? That's pretty strong, I like that. Uh, on top of that, you have so many defensive cards. You have After Image Technique, Death Ball, Bloodlust is technically a defensive card because it makes Double Strike go away. They can't even gain Double Strike later on with Chomp or anything like that. Uh, Flying Nimbus is very strong, especially against Swap. There's just, all your negates just stop Swap. I feel like this deck can actually beat them pretty, pretty easily. Um, Nimbus is just Nimbus. You just stop their turns and dead in their tracks, and they can't do anything about it. Um, unless they battering laser it. And then you can battering their battering, so who knows? Whatever. Frieza Call is probably the most interesting card in this list because it can actually pick red Frieza armies. That's people that probably didn't know that. Uh, it comes in rest mode, but since it's swap, it can just come back out uh, in active mode. So that's not that doesn't really hinder it at all. So you, Frieza's Call can catch the one drop or the two drop. So if you don't have the one drop in your hand, you can just skip it and go straight to the two drop with this one drop. So it's like another it's like another copy of the one drop Frieza, essentially. And it's yellow, so you can use it as a pitch target or a charge of, or for your energy. It makes it very consistent, and you like you really want to get your five drop out on turn three. So that is kind of helping the consistency of the deck. So that is the main board. Uh, I haven't really worked on the sideboard too much. I just kind of put the generic cards. Uh, Crusher Ball has many more uses uh, in a side environment, because sometimes you just don't need one of these cards, maybe. Like, uh, if you don't need Bloodlust or you don't need Nimbus, you just side in Crusher Ball for it instead. It might be more impactful. Um, Dark Power, Black Mask, like pretty much everything else is just black cards that have tech. So it's uh, they're colorless cards that can fit into any deck. Uh, Dende for energy is ramp decks, Kami for board if they go wide, and Har Har if they're green or yellow pretty much every time. Dark Black Mask Saiyan is very techy of a card. Uh, if you need to stop people from using revive effects like Child's Wish, you, you put them in there. Or if they try to use things that like Chain Zeno, not, not gonna lie, you don't probably put it in for that because you have Bloodlust on Bloodlust, so that's pretty relevant. But it's very good for revival decks, in my opinion. So definitely a sideboard possibility. I'm not too sure. This is just a first look at the deck. I It might change in the future. Everything might change in the future. I don't know. This is just like my first look at the deck. I think this is how Bandai probably intended the, the engines to go. It's much 
more focused than one T swap is. It actually has a clear finisher, and it's it doesn't take forever. Like for, this five drop is essentially a four drop uh, because you can go from the one to two to three to the five for about four energy. It, it takes exactly four energy, but you can do it over the course of a few turns, and it cheats it out even like two turns earlier. So this five drop is like a turn three, but it took you four energy to play. So I like that it actually has a great like in between steps, uh, mainly the three drop uh, and the one drop. The two drop is it's pointless. It's just whatever. <laughs> it, but it gets a it gets a 15k swing in, which is pretty strong. You can you can switch up and go pretty aggro with this deck, or go very very controlled and just wait for your crit to come out. And you just crit your opponent down. They never get any card advantage. I would say against Shenron, you're gonna go really aggro. Just attack with everything. Give your leader 5k. Attack with it. Uh, attack with a 15k two drop and then turn into a three drop. Maybe even attack with that one too. They probably can't attack you. They can't. They can't kill it as Shenron. I doubt it. Um, and then the five drop will just finish it out. Battering laser, Trompa, uh, Mira, good game. So yeah, I like how flexible this deck is. I'm really excited to see where this goes. But other than that, I would just I just want to make a quick video explaining what my thoughts on for this new deck uh, that's coming out in January. Hope you guys see you guys at the Atlantic City Pro Play Tour. This is, is going to be legal literally the day after the set. So I hopefully this might, makes you guys think of what you might want to bring for the event. Um, and I hope that helped you out. So thank you guys. Have a good night. Peace.